So we're going to talk about Messier 85. It's a thing called a lenticular galaxy or an S0 galaxy. Lenticular? Lenticular means lens-shaped. The names for these types of galaxies, particularly the S0, goes back to Edwin Hubble, who was the first person who did a kind of systematic job of arranging galaxies, trying to figure out what their different morphologies, what their different shapes were. And he came up with this thing called the Hubble sequence, which kind of arranges the galaxies from the least interesting to the most interesting. So starting with the round, very boring elliptical galaxies and going through to the beautiful spiral galaxies. But he suggested there might be a category in the middle which are kind of disk galaxies, so they have a thin disk to them, but don't have any spiral structure. So this is how he arranged them. Here are the boring ellipticals at this end, down to the beautiful spirals at that end. And he put the S0s in the middle, but you'll notice he's done little cartoons for all the others. But for S0, he hasn't done that. He has just drawn a little round circle with S0 in it. And interestingly, by the time he did this in the 1930s, he'd kind of given up on these galaxies. He thought they didn't exist. He said the transition stage, S0, is more or less hypothetical. The problem is that they're very hard to distinguish from elliptical galaxies. If you happen to see it fairly face on, it just looks round and smooth. In other words, it just looks like an elliptical galaxy. This is the fraction of the population in these different types of galaxy as a function on the bottom here of how dense the environment is. In other words, you've got, you know, at this end, this is where you're looking where there are very few galaxies. This is looking in the middle of a rich cluster where there's tons and tons of galaxies. So these are spiral galaxies, which are the majority. They're like 80% of the galaxies, the big bright galaxies. In the, in the field where there aren't lots of galaxies. But then when you go into clusters, you find there are very few spiral galaxies. These are elliptical galaxies, which there are very few of out in the field, very few that are kind of isolated. But when you look in the middle of dense clusters, they've gone way up. But the interesting thing is these are the S0 galaxies, the lenticular galaxies. And you can see again in the field, there aren't very many of them. But when you get into the middle of a cluster, there's lots and lots of them. But actually, if you look at this, this line is always above this line. In other words, whatever environment you're looking in, there are always more of these S0 galaxies than there are elliptical galaxies. So they're actually a more of a key component of the universe than elliptical galaxies. The main difference between a spiral galaxy and an S0 and lenticular galaxy is the gas content. At a spiral galaxy, you have the spiral arms, which are somewhat associated with gas because they're usually associated with new star formation. S0 galaxies, they're smooth. There's no new star formation going on. So that means there isn't the raw material to make stars. In other words, there isn't cold gas. And so what's likely happened is a spiral galaxy through some mechanism has had its gas ripped out of it and all that's left behind is this smooth disk galaxy that becomes an S0 or a lenticular galaxy. As this line for the spiral galaxies goes down, more or less paralleling this line for the S0 galaxies goes up. And so the simplest interpretation of this plot is that when a spiral galaxy encounters a denser medium, it gets converted into an S0 galaxy. One way of getting the gas out of a galaxy is smashing two galaxies together. And that's quite a good way of stripping the gas out, but it completely destroys any kind of beautiful disk-like thin structure. It'll just end up with an elliptical galaxy. So you need something a little gentler. There are various mechanisms that have been proposed, but probably the simplest is a thing called ram pressure stripping. That if our disk galaxy is traveling along and it encounters some gas, probably the, the hot gas associated, for example, with a cluster of galaxies. So you've got gas and stars here and a load of gas over here. As the two come together, the gas collides. The stars don't care. The stars just keep going. So what will happen is that the gas will collide and stop and the galaxy, the rest of the galaxy will just keep going. So it's rather like that trick of you know, pulling the tablecloth out from underneath everything. The stars are almost completely unharmed by this process, and so the disk galaxy carries on on its merry way, but it just leaves all its gas behind. M85 is just a nice poster child for an S0 galaxy because it has all the properties of an S0 galaxy. Here you immediately hit this issue that Hubble had, which is that that just looks round and blobby. But if you look really carefully at it, you will actually see there's kind of a faint fuzz about it. And so it's that that tells you that this is probably an S0 galaxy. If you look at how the light drops off in a disk galaxy like the Milky Way, it drops off exponentially with radius. If you look at an elliptical galaxy, it drops off in a completely different way. If you look at the outer parts of these galaxies, the light always drops off exponentially with radius. So that's a pretty good clue that it's the same kind of structure as a disk of, the, of a galaxy like the Milky Way. If you look at a lenticular galaxy face on, it gets mistaken for an elliptical galaxy. If you look at it edge on, all you see is a thin disk. That's exactly what a spiral galaxy looks like edge on. So presumably some of the things that we've classified as spiral galaxies are actually S0 galaxies. They're hard then. They're, They're a complete pain. But the interesting thing is when you do tunnel in and actually you know, look in great detail and really do the most careful job you can, it looks like they're actually one of the most common types of galaxy in the universe.